let's go to Ann in all four cities in Iowa, in the Quad Cities. What's up, Ann? Hi. How are you? I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> I'm really excited. Hey, me too. I am freaking out as well. <laughs> Why are you freaking out? Um, just there's a lot going on, but before right. I get to that, I will go straight to my question. I just want to say thank you so much for all of the work that you do and are doing. Um, it's been really meaningful for me. Thank you. That's meaningful for me too, for real. Because this ha the whole thing happens in a vacuum. We're like locked in a studio here, and James doesn't let me listen to the show, and so um, uh, that means the world to me. I'm grateful for that. Yeah. So, um, a couple of months ago, my dad passed away, and so I'm uh, still grieving that. I'm sorry. What did how did how did he pass away? Um, so I'm not sure how much detail I, I should get into, but um, essentially his what, his lungs gave out on him. Whatever you're comfortable um, with. Had, yeah. He had COVID, yeah. um, and then it was a battle, and then he he just got tired. Yeah. Um, so I'm still working through that, and then um, did you get to see him? Month, oh, uh, I'm sorry. I keep sorry. If I keep interrupting you. I just I'm trying to get a a, 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 a full picture. Did, did you get to see him, or did he have to? Yeah, did yeah. he die by himself? <clears throat> um. So early in the process, when he was first uh, hospitalized you know, we were able to see him and, and speak with him and mm -hmm. he was awake and then he ended up being sedated and, um, that's how he passed. Um, he was, he was alone. He was out of state. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was tough. It really was. And it's, it's, um, it still is right. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. All right. So then the next. Yeah. So then as I was walking through that, um, I unexpectedly found out that I was pregnant and was processing that. Um, and then within a time frame of about four days, I found out I was pregnant, found out my numbers were not where they should be, and um, ended up being an ectopic pregnancy. And so I miscarried. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of traumatic. I, it was, it required surgery and, and things. Um, not kind of. It, it was traumatic. <laughs> yeah, it sucked. It sucked, sucked, sucked. Yeah. Go in knowing that's the, that the end result there, right? Yes. Did you lose yeah. your fallopian tube? Yes, I lost one of my fallopian tubes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you lost an um, organ in the deal. Yes, I did. Man. <laughs> um, so was this pregnancy was, exciting? Was this pregnancy scary? Or are you all by yourself? You got other kids? Like, give me the context for the pregnancy. Yeah, so it it was exciting, unexpected, but exciting. Okay. Um, I do have two other children. Okay. Um, one is four and one is almost two. Yeah. Um, and we were not planning on having any more children, so we were kind of blindsided by it. But once we found out, we were excited. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you um, just, did you land on a name? No, we we didn't even get that far. The okay. furthest we get was me upset because we were going to have to buy a van, and I really <laughs> don't want a van. You would have been an awesome van mom, Ann. <laughs> Yeah. And with the van. Thankfully. That would have been awesome. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been a great bumper sticker. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Ugh. Yes. But my question is, um, I, like, I didn't want to have another child, but after having gone through all of this, I kind of want to have another child. Yeah. And I'm thinking, is that selfish? Is that something that I shouldn't even be thinking of because I've gone through so much within the past couple of months? Um but that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. So first and foremost, your feelings are your feelings and your thoughts are your thoughts. Mm -hmm. They don't always tell us the truth, but they're real. Does that make sense? It does. So I want you, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're thinking, whatever you desire now is all fine. It's all good. And you have been through hell. Because my guess is before your dad passed, it was hell. And trying to love somebody far away, and whenever parents pass away, it's always a mixture of ugh and heartbreak and all, you know, you know what I mean? You just went through all that, all that stuff. And then you got two little ones that you're trying to parent, and you got some knucklehead husband you're trying to <laughs> probably parent to, right? All, all the stuff. And then, man a corner of your heart got peeled back and you didn't even know it was there. And all of a sudden it's, so every, everything you're feeling is great. And so hear me say, if you want to have another baby, have another baby. 
If you found something new about yourself, that's one of life's great adventures, man. Go for it. And yeah. if you don't, then don't. The, the advice I got from when I was walking through this, very similar situation to you, ectopic pregnancy, a whole thing. Um, mm-hmm. The advice I got was from the, a, a counselor that I trust deeply with my life, and he's the guy who trained me on crisis stuff. Um, he said his recommendation is to wait six months to make any big life changes decisions after trauma. Yeah. And so, um, I know, I know families who have, have uh, one of my close friends lost, um, a pregnancy at the very, very, very end, like month eight and a half or month nine. And man, they were pregnant soon after great, great adventure for their family. Um, Mm -hmm. and then others wait years. So everybody's different. Grief is different for everybody. Um, what's your husband think about it? He doesn't want to have another child. Yeah. Um, and we knew that, you know, before we, we got pregnant, but um, he's willing to talk about it. Okay. Here's the, here's the I'm not going to tell you how to do grief because grief is yours. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give you a couple of recommendations, but I will give you one. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. First one is don't try to get past this stuff. Fully experience it. Yeah. And keep doing your life. What do I mean by that? On sad days, feel real, real sad. Let that sad just be a part of you for a season. When you think about your dad and your heart just feels like it weighs a thousand pounds, feel that. Don't try to, don't try to brush it off. And make sure you go for a walk that evening or you go do the class that you've signed up for, or you and your husband go play a game, whatever the thing is, okay? So it's both and. And the two com- the two competing wisdoms right now in our culture are just suck it up and crush it and that will go away, or you, you do you and you just sit there and let it wash over you for the next five years and whenever, you know what I mean? And what I want to say yeah. is there's, there's a third way. It's both and, okay? Don't ignore that stuff because it will weigh you down over time. And don't let it take over your life. It's both and. And it, there will be days when it takes over. Great. Get up the next day and have a good day the next day. The second thing is this. You've got to, got to, got to let your husband know what you're feeling. The thing that families, even on something like a miscarriage, or, is people grieve differently and they start hiding their grief from one another. They start hiding their tomorrow plans from one another. And then all of a sudden, boom, boom. We are two inches apart and 2,000 miles away from our loved ones sitting on the same couch, right? Yeah. And so you've got to be honest with him. Do you feel safe enough to be honest with him? I do. And he's been so supportive. Awesome. Oh, that's so, so, so good. And then here's my other recommendation. And this can be, this can be, um, controversial, blah, blah, blah. It's whatever. I don't care. Um, I would... Give yourself the opportunity to name this child and to write this child a letter about how much you miss him and you didn't get to get to meet him, but here's here's brothers and sisters, here's what life is, here's where we live. A just a conversation with. And it sounds counterintuitive. Like, why would I do that to myself? Why would I go into that? What I'm hearing from you is your body's already there, your just heart and mind isn't there. And so I would take that journey into that conversation with a letter. I'd write your dad a letter. Have you done that yet? Yeah. Um, I started a journal when he was sick and mm. I just was, was keeping things that I wanted to share with him there. And um, after he passed, I continue to write to him just oh, in a different context. Good, 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 good. Have you told him the bad stuff too? <laughs> Not yet. I haven't gotten there. Okay. Make sure you do that. Because dads aren't perfect. And your body will feel the gap between a guy that you had some major frustrations with. Probably. Not everybody, but probably. <laughs> am, I, am I on to something? No, I mean, he was great. Um, but we were so much alike that <laughs> we butted heads a lot. There you go. That's right. Y'all are two offensive linemen just banging heads against each other. So um, <laughs> make sure you honor the, the tough stuff, too. Because both end. Because he, okay. he helped... He helped mold into who you are, both the good stuff and the tough stuff. 
the stuff that your husband's like, oh my gosh, why? That, you know, some of that came from old man, right? So honor <laughs> yep. all of it. He and, reminds me. <laughs> right, <laughs> write him a letter about what you learned from him, what you didn't learn from him, what you should have learned from him, what you miss about him, what you are not going to miss about him. It's the whole human experience. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And good for you for writing a journal. What a gift. And I recommend anybody going through that, start that journal and continue to write, write, write. Um, the, the babies that we've lost in miscarriage, I've got their names tattooed on my body. That's how big of a deal I think that is, okay? Mm-hmm. Is to own it and to, they're a part of us, and then we're going to go on about what tomorrow's going to look like. But that's, that's, that's how me and my family have handled that. Um, and then if you want to have another baby, have another baby. Have that conversation mm-hmm. with your husband and be all in. Is that cool? Yeah, I can do that. Hear me say this. There is no wrong way to do this other than keeping secrets. Okay? Okay. Keeping secrets is the wrong thing to do. Everything else is a part of the the healing process here. If you want to have another baby, be honest with them about having another baby. And if it doesn't end up happening, it doesn't end up happening, um, but good for you. So, Mm -hmm. can I just tell you, brother to sister, I'm sorry. My heart's broken for you. Thank you. I know it doesn't bring anybody back, doesn't make anything better, but I want you to know you're not alone and that that grief is hard. And I'm sorry. <sighs> Thanks for being with us. Well, thank you um, for walking through it with me. Yeah. Um, I, I don't feel alone. Um, awesome. And I think that's part of the reason that, you know, I, I've started to open up and share some of my story with others because. I don't feel alone, but I know that others might, you know, who are work, walking through a similar situation. So, yeah. yeah. And in the process of wanting to help other people, don't forget to start with you. Your oxygen mask goes on first. You deserve a night of sleep. You need to take care of your body. You need to take care of your relationships. And then you're strong enough, well enough to love and walk alongside other people as they, their dark days descend on them. And we all have them. I'm grateful for your heart grateful for you. Yeah, you're not crazy. Griefs, you're in tough season, tough season, tough season. But uh, man, it's been an honor talking with you. 